Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today, we're going to have fun. We're going to speak with Lauren Bailey. She's the founder and CEO of Factor 8. Welcome, Lauren. I'm so happy to be here in Austria with you. So this is the time of the year where sales leaders and sales enablement leaders are concerned with budgeting for sales training. Any mm -hmm. advice? CSO Insights reports that companies who invest a minimum of 1500 bucks per employee in sales are going to see 24% higher profits. Companies who prioritize training have nearly double the profit, according to HR Magazine. Um, I love this one. Companies who train their managers see an average of 63% improvement across teams. And if you're having really, if you invest a lot and have a really great onboarding program, you'll see ramp time cut in half. It's not a waste of money. Some people compare it to the marketing budget. Companies notoriously overspend on marketing and underspend on training. Listen, we used to be able to hire sellers in with the experience we needed. The bare minimum was yep. college degree, two years of relevant experience, been in the industry and played a competitive sport. But it doesn't exist anymore. The average lifespan of an entry-level sales rep has gone relatively and steadily down, right? The last debt I got was about 15 months. So when we look at how much money we spend to bring them in versus spending the money to keep them, right? People will keep coming to work if they're successful and we're training right. them. And the, in fact, the studies say that that's the number one thing millennials are looking for in taking a job, getting lured away to another job or staying at a job. The majority of companies don't have a line item budget for development yet. We got recruiting, we got marketing, we got tools per employee, but not the development. And I think that's travesty. One sales manager that I, I remember who was a proponent of training uh, he had the saying, if you don't train him, you can't blame him. So true. But, you know, other people take the flip side and say, well, gee, why would I spend all this money on training these guys? Because right. then they're going to leave. A tool budget, I can at least give yeah. a license to the next guy. And right? then there's like, the, the illusion that uh, I don't train because I high experienced salespeople. That's gone. Training is an elevation of knowledge. And the amount of knowledge that salespeople need in order to match the expectations of the customer it's triple. is growing every single day. We expect salespeople to be knowledge workers and don't pay attention to what they need in order to grow their knowledge. If marketing so, could finish the job with the chatbot and the SEO, yeah. we wouldn't be here. Lauren, how do you train for authenticity? The first thing you do is ditch the script, Gerhard. So what you do instead is you look at the parts of the call, right? A voicemail, an intro, a discovery. Right. You help the rep by setting a goal. Then you work backwards to help them build the tools. What are a salesperson's tools? Questions, right? So you help them build the questions they need to ask, and then you practice having those conversations. Teach right. them about questions, follow-up questions, adding empathy to questions. Practice getting rid of the list, right? If you want to build them a tool, give them a tool of outcomes. Okay, I definitely need to get an understanding of the current situation, right? So uh, right there on the list, it says number of users and current systems. Check. I'm not going to write the question down because I'm going to read it. I just know I need to get that. It's a checklist right. of goals for this conversation. It's practice and it's confidence building. Play the pause game with a call recording. Okay. The biggest reason for a learning curve with new reps isn't that they don't know what to say. It's that they don't know when to say it. So when you use call recordings, you can hear the customer. It slows the game down. It's like watching game tape, right? Right. A brand new quarterback, like think of the rush that's happening. That's what's happening with new sellers. Right. You ask them what happened after a call, they're like, oh, I don't know, it was just it was all coming at me, right? right? So if you can play the call, then you pause it and you ask two questions. What's the customer thinking? So they're starting to learn to get into the shoes of the customer, right? And what would you do next? Oh, okay, I'm going to pull the file on my value pitch. I'm going to pull the file on my question. So- it's helping them make better decisions in the moment. And that builds real conversations. And that's authenticity. Let's get out of this gray robot script reading, boring, pitchy right. sales motion that we're in. What is our key takeaway idea that uh, we want sales managers to remember? Well, since we're talking about budgeting here, go ask what it is and demand for more. 
The companies who aren't cutting are stealing your best hires and your best hires don't want to stay without development. So go talk to your leadership about making sure you have what you need to retain your stars, to re-recruit, if you've lost some, the future stars, right? And to keep developing them to be a competitive differentiator because losing that development budget is you getting an arm tied behind your back right. and trying to recruit and retain great people with a very small hiring pool and very huge customer expectations. Right. Well, thank you, Lauren. Uh, you helped this um, help me tremendously to make it very enjoyable and very informative. And I want anybody who wants to learn more about effective sales training, head over to factor8.com. And we're going to have a download available as well with some of these stats to help you build a case. Awesome. Awesome.